the snooker is needed. Don't blame Ali for carrying on after winning the last three frames. He, he could get a chance and pot four reds and four blacks. And there's a glimmer of hope, but not much. the table as well there for the length of that safety shot right on the cushion Seven just remaining on the table, so two four point snookers. Well, that's not a bad start. Okay, easy hit. Daniel Sullivan, but he's a little bit unlucky, Ali Carter, as he grimaces, and that's because he's tied up the black. the pot to the right but he's playing a safety shot he's not risking anything even though Ali needs two snookers and that's careless that's very careless why didn't oh. Ronnie just take the pot on to the right corner doesn't I want to leave a free ball here Dennis Ali Carter four. <laughs> oh he's very close well I can only think he doesn't want to go for the red into the right corner in case he misses and let, lets Ali you know get four reds, four blacks, but he does need two snookers, and he had a shot available to the right corner. But as you say, kind of, he had left a free ball there. There was an extra red on the table then. It looks as if Ronnie's getting a bit of practice in for this evening session, you'd have to say. <laughs> now the cannon, this time. The chance is there, just this red, and then there'll be a handshake, you would feel. But he still needs three frames, so it's all to play for this Seven. evening. It was a very good fight back from Ali Carter to win three frames in a row, and it's far from over Eight. just yet, Ken. No, still plenty <coughs> of snooker left in this final, but Ronnie be mighty relieved. He's back to a five frame cushion going into this final session tonight. Eleven. 
yeah, at one stage, we thought it may not be a final session, but certainly all to play for now. And it's amazing he still wants to clear the balls. I mean, the frame's 18. long over. But he's been like that throughout 19. the whole championship. I remember one frame in the semi final, he was 80 behind, and he came to the table with one red on just to get a bit of potting practice. 25. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> Left handed, double into the corner pocket. Oh, this is good stuff. Left handed, right handed. I bet he could kick them in the pockets with his feet, this yeah. fella. <laughs> 30. 33. 37. Yeah, a lot of people that had bought tickets for this evening thought there wasn't mm -hmm. going to be a session. They can all queue up, and it could be very interesting here in the Crucible tonight. 42. with the black it looks like he is so Ronnie O'Sullivan clears up with a break of 55 and takes the final frame in this session he'll go into the final session this evening with a five frame lead and he leads Ali Carter now by 15 frames to 10 and Ronnie Jr. approves watching his dad walk back to the dressing room and O'Sullivan inching towards the line here there is Perhaps from Ronnie's fans' perspective, an air of inevitability, but certainly not from the perspective of Ali Carter, because he's given his all this afternoon, and you really have to applaud the way that he's battled back into this final, John. He stuck at it, he certainly did. He won those three frames, but it's funny that we said that Ronnie had lost his concentration, and it might be a twitchy frame. He got his concentration back straight away, and he won that in magnificent style. And that has actually been a feature of his play right the way through this championship, that whenever he's had those occasions where he's been pressed, He's pulled away again. Yes, indeed. Uh, Stephen, when you look back, it's 11 years since Ronnie won his first world title. And, and over those intervening years, you've obviously been in the sport. You've seen him mature and grow. What's changed? What's developed about his game from then until now? Um, well, definitely this championship. And, and the championship they won in 2008, when he beat me in the semi-final, he was playing perfect snooker like he is today. You know, he's, he was putting as much effort into a safety shot as he was into building a break. And that's how he's, he, he's, his game has grown. Obviously, he, he slowed down a little bit um, with age, as, as, as we all have. But he's still as dynamic in the balls. Yeah, and at 36 years of age, Steve, he's attempting to become, what, the second oldest player ever to win here after Ray Reardon, who was 45 in 1978. As you get older, how much more difficult does the challenge of winning more world titles become, and why? Well, I think as you get older, there's the possibility you don't respond to the pressure as well, but that doesn't seem to be Ronnie's case. Mm. He's, he's in good nick. Uh, physically, um, I, I'd, I'd put forward the, the, the sort of uh, the argument. He's a more skillful player now than he was when he first came on the scene. Uh, I think he's learnt his craft to, to the nth degree. Um, in this match, he, when he's been asked the questions, as John said, um, he's been able to respond under pressure when he could have started to relent and, and crumble. And that could be the, what happens as you get older. You don't respond to the pressure as well. So, in that department, he's. he's very strong as well. He looks like a, a very strong all-rounder. Mm, yeah, well, as we heard in that feature about uh, Ray Reardon, uh, Terry Griffiths saying that Ray had said, well, as you get older, the butterflies just get bigger in your stomach, and it's, and it's hard to contain those nerves, John. Yeah, absolutely, and of course, the other thing, you're always fighting off the young guard, because yeah. people are always coming along. It's a circle of life. As you're getting a little bit older, the young ones are coming through and getting better all the time, and you're always fighting those off. Okay, well, Ronnie, three away, as we say. But